Well, hello everybody, this is Tim Green with Rattle Magazine. Welcome to Poet Respond Live. It is May 10th, 2020, Mother's Day in the U.S., so happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there, including my own mother, who will probably be watching this eventually. Uh, happy Mother's Day, Mom. And uh, happy Mother's Day to uh, my wife and Rattle's assistant editor, Megan, uh, who's back behind me in the house somewhere. Um, she's a mother of our two children, Joe and Colin. And... Um, I don't know, they're, they're two great examples of kids, so she must be doing something right. So, um, happy Mother's Day, Megan. Um, now, I'm trying to make sure this works. The Facebook is being a little strange. Ah, Sean Hines is here. Good afternoon, Sean, where you are. Over on the East Coast. Nice to see you. Um, hmm. Somebody who's watching on, on Facebook, please leave me a message. Let me know that the stream is working. Because I have, it says, sorry... We're having trouble playing this video for no reason. Um, but we are live over on YouTube, of course, too. Um, and hello, Kathy Gibbons. Um, hello, um, Garudis Garwadkar. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Um, let's see. So Jessica Dawson saying hi. Lakshmi Nair saying hi. It's working for you, so I just don't have the preview window. Okay. Well, that's fine. As long as you're getting this stream, then we are all good. Um, yeah, so it looks like it's good, even though I can't see it. So I have no idea how many people are watching live. Just nothing's working over on Facebook but the comments. But um, it sounds like it's working, so great. Uh, now, this week's poem, we had two poems this weekend. And um, today's poem, which I haven't even posted yet in Rattle, is uh, Fog by Alison Luderman. She's a San Francisco-based poet. And, um, and you can tell sort of at this poem, A Foggy City. Um, here she is reading Fog, which um, I should say, I, I just felt like this was such a great uh, a metaphor. You know, we have the Neil Postman Award for metaphor um, because metaphor is so central to poetry, but we don't um, really get that many poems that are super strong in, in metaphor. So we wanted to publish that award to encourage people to think in terms of metaphor and try to get the freshest, most interesting metaphors we could in our submissions. And um, I just thought this poem was a great example of that. Uh, you know, it is, I think she says, um, let me read her note before we even get to it. Um, Allison says, um, um, I feel a kind of mental fogginess creeping in as we enter weak infinity of sheltering in place with no certainty about what the future holds. Not that we ever had certainty, not really. At times like these, it's helpful for me to remember that there has always been mystery in the heart of life. And yeah, that mental fogginess and that, that weak infinity, it really does feel like it's weak infinity, doesn't it? Um, yeah, I mean, every day sort of breezes in and out, <laughs> very similar to the last, at least for, for us here. I don't know. I did drive down to uh, Trader Joe's and uh, this week, and I was surprised at how, many, how much traffic there was and how it felt, how normal it felt, um, you know, the, the L.A. freeways, anyway. So here's uh, Allison Luderman's poem, fog. Fog. We don't have snow here, but some mornings the whole world is white and hushed and soft with fog, and whatever troubles we went to sleep clutched to our thudding hearts have loosened overnight and are dissolving in mist. The regal hills to the east have been erased behind a cottony scrim, and people appear to appear out of nowhere in the dawn hush. An old woman in mask and gloves pushes her shopping cart full of salvaged empties. A mother hauls two babies up the street, one in a backpack, one in a stroller. A man with dreadlocks and headphones cruises by on his bike, no hands. All of them whoosh into the frame and then vanish, like the future or the past or some other dimension alive but invisible to us. And that was Alison Luderman reading her poem, Fog, which, um, like I said, I really felt like that was a great metaphor that at the end there, the the way people whoosh into and out of the frame and then vanish like the future past or some other dimension alive but invisible to us. 
Yeah, that was just a... Um, I really thought it captured the feeling of uh, this moment in time really well. So that was the, one of the two poems we're uh, going to do today. And I uh, had to close the window because Sunday mornings here, um, motorcycles drive by. And um, we live on the... Um, it's a little crooked. Hang on. <laughs> um, we live on near uh, Angeles Crest Highway. And um, it's a very popular motorcycle um, a very popular motorcycle drive place and uh, they keep driving by so I had to close the window and then I bumped the, the microphone or the camera now um, I should say before we continue that um, if anyone would like to call in and join the open mic in just a second um, and I haven't even turned on Skype yet um, you can call 818-850-7727 and uh, just let the phone ring a few times, and um, then I'll call you back when the time is right. Uh, you can also send me a chat message over Skype to Rattle Poetry, all one word. And um, let's see. And I'll call you when the time is right as well. So my Skype's not opening. Hmm. Let's see. You have to quit Skype and turn it on again. Reload the thing. Um, yeah, so so this is a... The idea of this show is always just to share current events through poetry. And this week we had a whole bunch of um, other topics, which um, hasn't happened in a while. Uh, we had... Um, let's see, I have even wrote some of them down. So we had... It was Sign Sigmund Freud's birthday this week. So there's a poem about Sigmund Freud's birthday. Uh, Michael McClure died, the, the beat poet, who um, I'm not all that familiar with. But in the interview that's coming up... Um, with uh, Paul E. Nelson, uh, Michael McClure was the main um, sort of poet that got Paul E. Nelson into writing poetry. Um, Paul Nelson was a uh, radio host and interviewed Michael McClure along with, um, um, I don't know, other people who were poets, and uh, it got him into poetry. Uh, but Michael McClure died this week. Um, I also had some poems about Joe Biden. Uh, the resolution of New Jersey Bridgegate was this week, or, you know, the, the legal trial over it. Uh, we had some poems about murder hornets. We had some poems about Mother's Day. Uh, we had some poems about cherry blossoms uh, in the spring. And we had some great blue herons returning to nest in an area they hadn't been in a long time. So there were some of the other poems besides for uh, COVID-19 poems that we had. But of course, you know, among, among about 500 submissions, the majority were still about um, the current situation, which is unprecedented in... Um, in our lifetimes, anyway. So it makes sense that we would be writing about that still. Um, so whatever poems you have to share, feel free to uh, give me a call at 818-850-7727 or um, send a Skype message to Rattle Poetry. Um, now, of course, one of the other topics that we talked about this week um, was the death of Ahmed Arbery. Um, and if you haven't seen the video, I don't know if I'd recommend it. It's a horrific video to watch, although maybe it's one of those things that's important to see. Anyway, I know Michael Mayerhofer, who wrote this poem, ended up watching it a lot, um, and it's really it's really a tragic thing uh, that happened on a lot of fronts. The um, um, I don't know. It, it's always it's always difficult to talk about race as a as a white person, and um, and and it's knowing the privilege that you've you've lived with, um, and, and this poem really talk to that for me personally, because I've been through, as, as all people have, experiences where we've been sort of let off the hook in this way. And then, and then when something like this happens, it makes you think back to that, um, those times where, where, where you weren't shot for uh, doing something you weren't supposed to do. And, um, and so here is uh, Michael Mayerhofer, and this is his poem uh, for Ahmad Barbary, an unarmed black jogger killed for allegedly looking in the window of a house under construction. For Ahmad Arbery, an unarmed black jogger killed for allegedly looking in the window of a house under construction. I was 22, white, in love. That day I wasn't shot for trespassing. It happened nearly two decades ago. We started out in the back seat of her parents' Oxblood Subaru heading back from the country club with bellies full of prime rib and vegetables I could not name. Then her father touched the brake, 
pointed to a mansion being built beyond a phalanx of dogwoods, timbers stacked like wine-washed bones on a generous plot of Iowa soil. The crews had already gone home, just some golden tape left behind. So we pulled over, got out, explored. Her father darkly pinstriped, her mother sporting a heavy rosary of pearls. Before long, neighbors spotted us and waved, smiling from their hoses. Unfazed, my girlfriend and I slipped away and touched primally in what might have been a stranger's future bedroom, its walls unmade. After a great while, we reunited beside half a staircase. Her parents forgave our absence with a shrug and a suggestion of frozen yogurt. On the way back, I could smell her on my fingers, which made her blush. Meanwhile, her parents shared daydreams of their own mansion with taller floors and windows, thicker drapes to block the sunset. That was Michael Mayerhofer reading uh, his poem um, for Ahmed Arbery. Let me read his note. Uh, this is Michael Mayerhofer speaking here. Um, when I read about Ahmad Arbery murdered for supposedly looking in the window of a house still under construction, I immediately flashed back to a time when I'd done something similar, though actually a lot more obtrusive, without offering any consequences whatso- suffering any consequences whatsoever. There were four of us that day, my girlfriend and me, plus her parents. However, because all of us were white, and her parents also happened to be wealthy, as evidenced by their clean new car and formal attire, no one in the neighborhood batted an eyelash. To be honest, I might never even have given that incident a second thought if I hadn't read about the circumstances behind Arbery's murder. Given my own impoverished childhood, I admit that I sometimes chafe at the notion that I've benefited from white privilege. That's the biggest hallmark of white privilege, though. Those who benefit from it rarely even know it's there until something happens that makes the double standard impossible to deny. And yeah, so I thought uh, that was just an excellent poem, a a straightforward story, um, but a a story that speaks a lot and and makes makes you think about a lot of things. So thanks to Michael Mayerhofer for sharing that that poem with us today. Um, So that was Saturday's poem. We also had a poem about uh, Kim Jong-un back on Tuesday, and... um, so that's another topic, another non-COVID-19 topic, although that's sort of tangentially related because who knows um, what Kim Jong-un is up to. And um, we also have a poem coming up about uh, from Sony Greenfield on Tuesday. You'll have to wait for another Poets Respond poem, uh, this one about um, eels in an aquarium in Japan. So keep look, uh, look forward to that on Tuesday. Now... Um, as I said before, if you'd like to call in on the open mic, it's 818-850-7727, or you can send a Skype message to Rattle Poetry. We have, um, let's see, Sh- um, Shaya Masri Maji, uh, Pranab Ghosh, uh, Bill Friedman, uh, if he's still watching, and, and Nicole Kramer, um, have, have, and Richard Westheimer have texted me so far, so we'll get to, get to all of you. Um, and, and you can always, um, I can show the poem on the screen if you submitted it to Poets Respond. Um, so that's easy to do. Um, I can just pull up what you submitted. If you um, edited the poem significantly since submitting it, or if you um, want to share a poem about current events that you haven't submitted yet, you can send it to openmic at rattle.com. Uh, that's all one word, O-P-E-N-M-I-C at rattle.com. And um, I can pull it up there from uh, my email. So those are the two options if you want to um, show the poem that you would like to share. Uh, and before we get to the open lines, we have a sort of semi-open line to do. And um, this is a poem, uh, a special request from Celine Mariotti. Um, and we have a poem from her. And um, this is a, a Mother's Day poem. And... Um, uh, Celine Mariotti said um, that her t- um, this week is her mother's 90th birthday, and she can't join us on the open mic live today because they're actually having a birthday party for her mom. Um, but um, her mother, Mary Mariotti, um, is turning 90 years old this week, and she wanted me to share this poem, and um, they're going to be watching it. So here, this is Mother's Day. Um, it's a special day by Celine Rose Mariotti. Mom is a wonderful word, the most special person in my life. She gave me life. She gives me love. 
Every single day, she's always there for me, my right-hand person, my go-to person, my best friend in the whole wide world, my own appointed editor. She gives me her editorial input on my work, and she's very helpful. When I was younger and in school, she helped me with my projects. She let the nuns know that no one could hurt me, because my mom wouldn't let me. Those mean old nuns hurt me. My mom was always there to give me advice, take care of me when I was sick, bake cookies and cupcakes together. My mom, my sister, and me, we all spent a lot of time together, and we still do. We go on vacation together, watch our soap operas together. My mom is special to me and my sister. Mom is a loving word for the most loving person in my life. So thank you to um, Mary Mariotti, and happy birthday. Um, and thanks to Celine Rose Mariotti for sharing that poem. Um, now let's go to the uh, open mic. Now the first poet we have is um, Shaya Masri Maji. And let me give, uh, give her a call. And I should say before we uh, get into it, I'm going to be calling you from the future. There's a 30 second to a minute delay. Um, so who knows... Um, you know, it might be a little confusing, so turn off your YouTube stream if you're watching on YouTube or, or, or your um, live stream. Let's see. Hello? Can you hear me? Hey, Shaya Masri, this is Tim with Rattle. Hey, um, do you want to um, pu push your uh, camera button if you'd like to appear on screen? Uh, oh, great. Thank you. Okay, let me pull you in one second. Here you go. Um, hello. Um, hello. You too. So, so where are you calling from? I'm from Durgapur in West Bengal, India. Ah, and you said there, there was a storm just recently? Yes, yes. In the just uh, two, two or three hours back, there was a storm, and uh, that's why all our devices have been out of order. Oh, really? No charge. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you could join me. Uh, thanks so much for calling in. Um, and it must be um, we we've had a bunch of callers lately from India, so it must be like about nine o'clock there or so at night. Uh, no, no, it's it's okay. It's, I am very glad that you <laughs> called me. Um, okay, so Hello. yeah. Hi. So, what poem did you want to share? Uh, should I share the poem that I have? Uh, I sent you. Should I share yeah, that the, poem, the, or should I? Share? Yeah. Is it no kiss, no hug? Is that what you want to share? That'd be good. Yes, okay. Yes. Yeah. Let me uh, pull it up so everybody can see it. Um, uh, should I take the poem then first? Let me take out the poem. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I'll, I'll show it so everybody can see it while you're doing that. So here's that. Mm -hmm. Here's her poem. It was No Kiss, No Hug. So whenever you're ready, people can read, too. Yes, I'm, I'm there. Okay. I, I'm making a call on Skype for the first time. Oh, well, it's working great. So um, thanks so much for doing it. And um, it's just great to be able to hear. Yes, I downloaded it today. <laughs> I downloaded the app today so that I can uh, call you. Well, that, that is fabulous. Thanks so much. Um, do you have your poem ready? And, and do you want to say anything about it first to introduce it? Uh, yeah, I, I like the uh, magazine very much. I went through certain poems and uh, I really liked it. Well, thank you. Well, do you want to read your poem, uh, No Kiss, No Hug? Um, yes. Uh, may I, that poem, may I read another poem because I am not, I'm not able to find that poem right um, now. Yeah, the... sure. Go ahead and read whatever you'd like. And let us know what it's about, too, so we can... Um... It's also about uh, lockdown, about the, uh, about the crisis that we are going through right mm -hmm. now. Okay, well, let's hear it, yeah. Should I? Yeah, yeah, please do. Lockdown. In lockdown, time does not pass. I sit on the veranda vaguely. No newspaper, a neighbor starts. An empty street flows between us. I reply, no paper, no fish, Mr. Das. What is the latest update? He asks. 
we gesture with our sanitized hands to the masked gods gazing from above from the green branches schools a dove we wonder if it is telling a tale of love in silence without a word in the air he goes his way i to mine through an eerie tunnel exuding pungent odors of disinfectants in a morgue near the heart i watch mr das as he walks down the path across the peace haven amidst half rolled sacks he buys beans and bitter gourds from lazarus thank you yeah thanks so much for sharing that poem i really appreciate it um and and glad it could work um and everything you know worked out and all the technology does thanks for sharing that Um, thanks for calling me and allowing me to share my poems. Thanks a lot. My pleasure. Have a good one. Bye. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Um, next up, we have um, Pranab Gosh um, with Last Sleep. Let's see. Give him a call. Try to find his poem too while you, while we're waiting for it to uh, rain. Well, it's ringing. It hasn't said that the call's missed yet, though, so let's see. Well, he's not answering, so let's go to the next the next potent line. We'll go back to Pranab in a little bit. Um, Pranab, if you're watching this, uh, maybe your ringer might be off, so um, turn it on so I can give you a call. Let's do a, um, let's see. Bill Friedman is here, but I'm not sure he's, let me do um, Richard Westheimer. And I'll send I'll send Bill a chat message too to make sure he's there. Here's Richard Westheimer. Hey, Richard, good to see you. Let me pull you in just one second. Um, um, you're on screen and audio. So how are you doing today, Richard? I... I'm doing well. It's, uh, it's, uh, I know it's very warm out in your part of the country. It's Oh, oh yeah, there's a storm, isn't there? Well, and polar vortex in May. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a new world. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it definitely is. It's a very unseasonable. Um, so... So what what do you have for us this week? Uh, is it the um, so I have the poem "The Day the Streets Rose Up." I did send you a revision, but the it's pretty much like the one I sent okay. uh, earlier. Oh, I see the I see the revision too. So we we'll show that version. Uh, what do you, what do you want to say about it? the headline? Cincinnati streets to close so restaurants can use outdoor space for seating from the Cincinnati Enquirer. Yeah, it just uh, just sort of like closed my eyes and envisioned what the progression of that would be into the future of uh, cars off the streets and um, the the mix of thinking about the protests in Columbus which were very ugly mm -hmm. and just imagining if they were a different kind of protest yeah yeah that's interesting okay so um go ahead and, and read it okay um, the day the streets rose up in the second week of the second month of the great slowdown of 2020. The streets lined up for blocks around the Capitol, held up signs that once read stop and no parking, that now proclaimed set us free. Keep at bay, they say, the heavy burden, the cars and trucks we've carried. 
Let the ground beneath us breathe free, relieved of the fearsome weight you've put upon us. The soil whispers up through the press of pavement, longs for the feel of human feet treading lightly on its spine, awaits the chatter of conversation instead of the roar of road machines, yearns for laughter and the clatter of China, replacing screeching tires and clanging horns, imagines the aroma of fresh bread in the exile of exhaust fumes. And in the hush, quiet after hours, when all the people have padded away, silence, the earth will dream of roots, the pavement will sigh like an ox unyoked, and the signpost will twine like lovers. And as the street lights dim, the brown stones will huddle round and sing lullabies to the bench sleepers. I will peek from a side alley and weep at all the times I'd plied those roads, forgotten what lay beneath them, hunting grounds, the far-reaching roots of virgin forest beaches, voles and ant colonies, beetles and moles and badger dens. Now, only the faintest wisps of mycelium survive, still in touch with the wild cousins miles away. They await the day of a greater slowdown yet to come. Thanks so much. That was Richard Westheimer reading The Day the Streets Rose Up. And, um, yeah, that's one of the things, you know, there, there aren't that many benefits from this, but maybe, um, you know, opening up streets like that. I've seen a bunch of articles, too, about um, closing down streets so that bikes can use them instead of cars. Um, I think it was at Oregon closed some, you know, 100 miles of roads so that bicycles could could take them over again, uh, which is a nice... A nice thing to think it's of, like, yeah, yeah. It's like the decommissioning of dams, mm-hmm. and you know, may, may, maybe we can, <clears throat> you know, I don't know if it'll restore to the place where the mycelium actually thrive under those streets, mm-hmm. but at least that people can thrive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, well, thanks so much for sharing that, Richard. It's always good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, so uh, let's see. Who is up next? Um. Uh, let me remind everybody one more time, uh, just in case you're looking for the call number, that the um, phone number is 818-850-7727, or you can uh, send me a chat message over Skype at Rattle Poetry. Um, let's see. Um, let's see, we have... Um, Um, let's do uh, Frank Ortega, another regular caller here, and see what Frank has for us this week. And um, he's calling over the phone, which of course is easy to do. Hello. Hey, is this Frank? Yeah, boy, it's so strange, uh, but I got the hang of it now. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, good to see. You. Let me pull you in so everybody else can hear you too. Um, there we go. So how are you doing, Frank? You're live on the air. All right. Um, yeah, it's, uh, the, I'm just going to share a poem that, uh, was the recent news event is in the poem. So that'll be clear. Mm-hmm. And the, the place that it's about is just a place that I often drive by and, and, and contemplate all the failures of our society in terms of, um, helping others. Um, and then having it in plain sight. In this case, it's a homeless encampment. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's all kinds of words you can use, but it's just the same thing uh, from the 1930s. And um, and I'm just feeling like everything is in a big historical cycle. And um, and we it really it would be great if we could pull ourselves together this time and make some changes. Yeah. So that the poem you know, tries to reference, I don't think I, I hit it, but the, it re- references back to the Great Depression, it references back to just the kind of cycles we go through, and yet we seem to keep going through them, right? So, um, and that's it. Um, it's it's kind of fun doing a prompt, even though it's not my usual style. All right. Okay. Um, under Truman on President Street. Every time I drive into Savannah, on President Street, 
I slow down as I enter the shadow of the Truman Parkway overpass to gaze at the human encampment there in a forest of concrete pylons and weeds, how it goes back as far as I can see, tents in all shapes and sizes, those people, the only ones taking that very long walk beside the highway to and from our quaint historic town, in the blazing sun. One of my elderly roommates at the boarding house I live in makes 100 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches every week, drives them over in his vintage VW bug and hands them out one by one like an inspired host. As the pandemic silently grew, the city parked a small water trailer there the kind farmers in the Southwest fill every day because their own land is turning to dust. And a few weeks later, a dumpster, such small civilities, as if an entire city is finally admitting that scores of someone lived there. Those basics should have been given from the start with portable outhouses, daily meal deliveries, doctor visits, and books, and flashlights, and bedding? Or how about just a damn place to live that isn't under a highway named after a president of the United States who burned two cities into ash? Yesterday, a man named Christopher died there, cut by blade wounds. Christopher is short for Christ. They were about the same age when murdered, and we wielded that blade. We put them in such a place of vulnerability, all of them, all of us, because we could not bring ourselves to work those necessary miracles required of all human beings to always struggle to change any society that dares build such temples of neglect, both inside and and outside our souls, right there along President Street in the shadow of Truman. Thanks so much. That was Frank Ortega reading under Truman on President Street. Um, a, yeah, a great reminder um, and a great sort of, you know, attempt to look forward to a better future maybe. Uh, thanks for sharing that, Frank Ortega. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tim. Have a good one. Yep. Let's see. Who is next on the list? Um, let me try, let me try going back to, uh, Pranab Ghosh. Hmm. Let's see, it's still not connecting. Yep, but, yeah, the connection's not working. Sorry about that, Pranab. Um, I'll try it one more time at the end of the show. Maybe it'll work then. Um, Nicole Kramer will be up next. Let me um, pull up her poem first. She sent it over. That's another way you can do it, actually. It works fine if you um, send it over um, the chat message window. You can add a Word document or something like that. And uh, that's what Nicole did. Um, let me give Nicole a call. Hey, Nikel, this is Tim with Red. Am I saying that right? Nikel? Nikel. Nikel. Like Michael. Ah, oh, gotcha. Well, um, thanks so much for um, for joining us. Let me pull you in so everybody can see you. Nice to see you today. Thanks so much uh, for joining us. Mm -hmm. and, thanks for doing yeah, this. Yeah, oh, it's my pleasure. It's just a lot of fun to do. Um, now, the poem you sent, let's see. This is in honor of Gary Snyder's 90th birthday. Um, Which was Friday. Yeah, yeah. Let me... Um, here we go. Okay. So um, that was 8V40120. Uh, it, it, what's the significance of that title? That's uh, one thing Snyder did, was famous for, was uh, sort of tying back to 
the Paleolithic. And uh, uh, an issue, um, something he often did was he had this dating system. So 8-5 is May, eight, May 8th. Mm. And he dated, but he dated things from what he understood to be the beginning of the Paleolithic. Mm. So this is this is now the year by that by that scheme forty thousand one hundred and twenty. Interesting. Do you know what what event starts the Paleolithic? Is there why? How can you get it that specific to a year? Um, I, I'm trying to remember. He talks about this in one of his essays. I'm trying to remember precisely what it was. It, it, I mean, obviously, it's it's a rounding mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, <laughs> issue, yeah. but. Uh, um, I don't know if it was the the Lacole paintings. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, that can't be right. Yeah, that's right. Certainly after yeah. that, but it was it was. Um, I I don't know off the mm-hmm. top of my head. Yeah, but but it was just uh, it was it was um, this it, this interesting lovely uh, thing that he he has several poems mm-hmm. named. Yeah, I love. I just love that topic of deep history and how much you know. Yes. You know, about about maybe seven times as much recorded or not recorded in history as could possibly have been recorded because you know written language is only about five thousand years old. So, uh, and, and you, I, I love that you use the term which I learned from him too: deep history as opposed to prehistory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, it's deep, deep, and I, I think the, some amazing things happened back there. If you look, I, I, I love the um, Gobekli Tepe site in. Uh, in uh, Turkey, is it Turkey? Tur- if you, uh, yeah, but if you're familiar with that, Tur- it's just uh, twelve thousand years old. These amazing relief carvings and this huge temple complex that uh, we had no idea existed twelve thousand years ago. Um, anyway, so uh, Gary Schneider's ninetieth birthday is this week, and uh, you have this poem, so let's share it. Okay, um, so again, title eight five forty one twenty, and there's as a small epigraph: all true paths lead through mountains. With the myths and the texts in the back country, doing the real work of distant neighbors by teaching, by letting me understand how poetry comes to me. With the axe handle left out in the rain until we both know the old ways through placing Oikos back on the fire in the island in an island of no nature. Until at ten thousand years, resting, seated by riprap. Here above Pate Valley, we will learn this is our body. Thanks so much for sharing that. Do you want to, um, I'm trying to, yeah, I couldn't get it on screen. It was stuck on uh, Megan Mariotti's poem. So nobody could see it, but people could hear it. Um, It was a great poem. Thanks so much for sharing that. Thank you. Thanks for doing this. Again. Oh, it's it's definitely my pleasure, um, and I'm glad you could call in. And it's nice to have some non COVID nineteen poems this week too. Yeah, it's it's Snyder reading Snyder and the, the issues he talk about. They're certainly not unrelated. They're mm-hmm. not, you know, it, it, it's it may not be as explicit, but it's still all still there. Yeah, yeah, definitely that's true. It's a good point. Um, well, Michael, thanks so much for joining us and sharing that poem. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Okay, let's see. I would like to figure out how to get this back on screen. I think I might have to um, redo my screen view. Yeah, so this is going to be the prompt for next week, for uh, Tuesday. But let me try to get the... I think I might have to remove this and then add it back. Um, just for the next poet who would like to. Um, let's see Maybe a window capture there we go let me pull it up there you go that's that was the poem that uh Michael just read now uh, Bill Friedman is calling so let's let's go over to Bill Friedman I mean, it's a terrible decision. Oh, here, oh, that this thing is starting, Itai. Okay, okay, great talking to you. Thanks a lot. Bye, bye. Hi, Tim. Hey, Bill. Good to see you again. You're on the phone, I guess. Just so everybody yes, at home yeah, might not be a little confused. See, <laughs> just, 
just talking to my son who lives in Mexico City. Oh, how are things in Mexico City? Well, you know, they are being careful, finally. They were very lackadaisical about it. At the beginning, the president was shaking hands, saying the whole thing was nonsense, and they weren't shutting down, but they got wise, and now they're pretty well shut down, being careful. Yeah, yeah. 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 And you're calling from Israel again. Um, how, are th how are things yeah, this week yeah. in Israel? Well, uh, they're opening up. They're opening up, and uh, they're still being quite careful, I think. You know, we did very well. We had only about 250 deaths mm -hmm. and a population of 9 million. So we did well. Yeah, our main problem is our prime minister is a crook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem. Yeah. Not the corona. The virus isn't the problem. Our government mm, is the problem. Yeah, well, I think yeah. a lot of countries share that, that problem, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so right. what do you want to share with us today? Oh, okay. So I'm on now. Oh, yeah, you're on. Yeah, right. it's just I a little pre-discussion. Yeah, you're on. Oh, we don't have any screeners. It's just me <laughs> sitting at a computer. So. <laughs> okay. Have you been on for a while, Tim? Because I tried you a few minutes ago and didn't get it. Didn't get in. Uh, yeah. You've been. Yeah, you've we've been, been live live yeah? for 45 minutes. So, um, you know, so oh. you're, you're um, well, caller well, number I don't know six right. or so. Okay. Well, I sent you this uh, poem about uh, you know this battered wife. Did you send it did over you, did you get that? Uh, email or um, how'd you send it? Uh, oh, uh huh. Yeah, I think I sent it on email, right? To Tim at Rattle. Okay, let me let me try yeah. to find it. So it's an ugly poem. So I don't know if you want it. It's not going to uplift anyone. It's pretty horrible. <laughs> pretty ugly poem. Let me just turn the light on okay. here. Um, but. Hmm. Oh, here you go. Okay. Art for art. Yeah. Yeah, art for art. Let me uh, let me open it up for everybody to see. Um, actually, so you, you sent me a file that's huge with a lot of poems in it. Pardon? You sent me a file. That, oh, yeah. Really? Oh. That's or maybe, maybe not. All right, for I have sky writing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, I see. So that's a more recent poem of mine. Okay. <laughs> that's another nasty poem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I must have. You must have got the whole file. I've read. I've written about six thousand poems, Jim. <laughs> I've been writing for 60 years, and I've written about 6,000 poems. So you don't want to look at the. All right, I'll read the other one, right? The I didn't get the news today. I didn't get the news from, um, that you submitted? Uh, that's the one I had last time. Okay. I didn't, I didn't read it last time, though, did I? No, I don't think okay. so. No, last time I read Memorial Day, yeah. about Memorial Day in Israel. Okay, right. so where, where would I right. find that poem? Uh, I didn't get the news today. Well, I don't know. I sent it in to you last time and you had it because you asked me if I was going to read that poem. So it means you had it. Okay. Um, let's see. I mean, if I scan it and send it to you, is, is that quick I'll, enough? I'll, I can find I it. I'll find, I'll find it. Let's see. Okay. Am I didn't I get the news today. Yep. Time? Here we go. I didn't get the news today. I had it. Oh, you yep. got it. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So I'll read that. I didn't get the news today. The newsboy tossed it, accidentally, I assume, over the rail into a clump of bushes in the valley where I can't reach it. It is giving them the news, telling the gorse about the virus, the rising death toll, the elderberry in an indignant editorial about the self-absorption, confusion, and cruel indifference of the president. Discoursing learnedly to the trees that blanket it in shadow about the dread black plague that murdered millions so long ago, even the oldest oak hadn't witnessed or been told of it till now. Branches are bending down and leaning for a closer look, their vision blurred with age. From an inside page, the paper speaks more intimately to the white chrysanthemums and yellow roses about an ordinary family in Iowa, the father's agonizing death in a Des Moines Corona ward alone, shows the wildflowers visibly shaken, a picture of his grieving wife 
struggling to be strong for their two children, too young to understand. I can see where the news fell, tightly folded on the wrinkled petals of the cyclamens and daisies. They rubberneck around its edges from below, as though to read unnoticed for themselves what it will not say. But this is only my imagination. Their stems are bent and crushed beneath it. Thanks so much. An excellent poem. And that was uh, Bill Friedman reading I Didn't Get the News Today. Uh, thanks so much for sharing that, Bill. Uh, I appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Jim. Thank you. I like what you're doing. You're doing great work, really. Well, thanks. Yeah. It's, it's my pleasure. And, and getting people to join in from all over the world is um, a really fun thing. So so thanks for being part of that. That's, that's, that's great. Absolutely wonderful. Keep doing yeah. it. I don't have to tell you that. You're going <laughs> to. I definitely will. Well, have a good one, Bill. Talk to you soon. Uh, be well, Jim. Take See care. You. Okay. Let's see. Um. Let's see. Um, now we have a. I'm not sure if I can do this over. Um, I have a phone number here. Oh, you know what? Apparently, you can send uh, chat messages to my Skype. I didn't even. I mean, um, you know. Uh, um, what's it called, text messages. So even if you're using a phone, you can still send me text messages. Um, and some are an, eight, an 847 number has a Mother's Day poem. Um, so let me try that. Let's see who we're calling here. Hi, this is uh, Tim with Rattle. Um, you're on. Oh, hi, Tim. Thanks yeah. for calling me. Oh, it's my yeah. pleasure. Who am I talking to? Uh, Lakshmi Neo. Oh, hi. Good to see you. Um, yeah, nice to meet you. I love your program. It's the first time I'm joining. Thank you. Yeah, well, my pleasure. Happy to have you. Where are you calling from? Oh, Chicago. Ah, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. And you wanted to share a Mother's Day poem, you said. I don't think I have the text of yeah. it anywhere. Did you email it to. Um, Open I mic. sent a text message because um, I didn't know how to send immediately. And mm -hmm. so it's a Mother's Day slash human rights poem. It's called The Mothers of Plaza de Mayo from uh, when we visited Argentina. The, they have a Mother's Day. Uh, no, it's not a mother. It's not. It's a Mother's March. Every Thursday they have this Mother's March. So I don't know how to send it. Um, so. I just texted you. Yeah, I didn't get it over oh. text, um, but if you can really quick email it to openmic at rattle.com, I can put it on that way, or you could just read it and we could just listen. Okay, um, whichever is faster. I don't know how long the program is. so uh, We have a few minutes. Um, Do you want me to... Um, um, yeah, why don't you just email it to me, because it's nice to be able to read along. Uh, so if you could yeah, email yeah, it to yeah. me really quick, and I'll just, I'll just ramble until, um, until you're ready. Okay, do you want like a word or just a, can I copy and paste to the email? Yeah, yeah, copy and paste and email it to openmic at rattle.com because it didn't come through the um, the text message. I had a, there's a few messages, but the poem didn't actually come. So, um, open mic uh, at uh, rattle.com. Yeah, right? open mic at rattle.com and, and mic is M I C. Okay, okay, we'll do. Okay, now um, it's a good a little break for a second. We'll keep, uh, um, We'll keep Lakshmi on the line, but um, I, I wanted to say anyway, uh, the prompt poem for um, this week is going to be um, run-on sentence poem. Write a prose poem consisting of one long sentence, commas, and other punctuations okay. So uh, that's the prompt poem, uh, Megan's prompt, every Tuesday night for the Rattlecast. So if you would like to participate in that open mic on Tuesday night and you want to write your own run-on sentence poem, all you have to do is participate in the same way. You can email the text of the poem to openmic at rattle.com and you can uh, call in during the show to read it or I can just read it for you if, you, if you're if you unable to. Um, oh. I can't pick a... That's I, awesome. um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, you know, I pick... A few poets to read. I, you know, we get about maybe a dozen every time, and, and we can only do a few. But um, if anybody would like to do that, feel free. Um, let's see. I'm still waiting for the lecture. I know you're here on the line still. I'm still waiting for the poem. 
Oh, okay. Uh, let me let me send it to you. I was going to stop talking <laughs> before I send it. Okay. So okay. Let me send it to you. Okay. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so so that was the prompt for this week. Uh, was write a okay. sentence poem. Oh. Write a prose poem consisting of one long sentence. Commas and other punctuation are okay. Uh, now we're just waiting for Lakshmi's poem. Open mic. Open mic, all one word. O p e n m i c at rattle dot com. We also have. Um, now I'm talking to everybody on the show. Uh, we have uh, Vidya Venkat and uh, Margaret Koger just uh, sent me some poems too. Um, so if you would like to join in, you can just uh, give me a call at uh, Rattle's number, which once again is eight one eight eight five zero. 7727, I'll call you back when we're done with Lakshmi. Um, or Vidya, um, I know you were on my call list um, somewhere down from last week or two weeks ago. I just sent it. Um, okay. Um, did you, okay, sorry. Oh, no problem. Um, let, me, let me pull it up. Okay, here we go. So this is... Uh, Mothers of Plaza de Mayo. I'm glad we could wait for this. So thanks for taking the time to send it, too. Um, so I'm not doing the, the video. Can I do just the audio? Yeah, you can just read the poem. The poem's on screen now for everybody to read. And uh, you can just read it. Okay. Okay. So do everybody, everyone can hear me? or? Yep. yep, everyone can hear and see you. I mean, see the poem. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I am... Uh, I will tell a little bit background and then start. We yep. were vacationing in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and we happened to uh, witness a march of mothers, and they have this march since um, 1977 uh, because during the dirty war, they lost a lot of children, and there was no trace. And so three women organized this march for missing children, and <clears throat> this is, it still continues every Thursday, uh, and now it turned out to be a human rights march. Um, so that is the background of this poem. Uh, it, it happens in the Plaza de Mayo and where the official buildings are. So the poem is called Mothers of Plaza de Mayo, a poem by Lakshmi Mayer, which is me. Mother's touch, soft as down feather, coming down from heaven, yet firm as iron grip. Mother's voice, kind as summer breeze, shifting through our hearts, yet fierce as summer storm. Azina, Esther, and Maria shout, where are our children? Ashes of Azina scatter the ark, where is my child? Air in Venezuela's protest demands an answer. Grandmothers of Plaza de Mayo lament, where are our children? Mothers of the world come march along, wear white scarves, yell, where are our children? Repeat, where did all the children go? Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing that poem, Lakshmi. Um, Mothers of Plaza de, de Mayo. And... Um, I also pulled up really quick the Wikipedia article about it so people could see a little bit. Um, yeah. Yeah this, is the, yeah, this is the Plaza del Mayo. So if anybody wants to learn more about this, go to Wikipedia and, um, and look at it there. Uh, but thanks so much for, for calling in, Lakshmi. It's good to hear from you, and thanks for sharing that poem. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, goodbye. Okay, let's see. So we have... Um, Let's see. Uh, so Vidya says she's putting her nephews to sleep right now, so I can't call, but ask me if I'd read the poem that she sent. Um, and yeah, it'd be my pleasure. Let's see. This is um, Vidya Venkat again, and um, she was on last week, and uh, this is her poem that she sent it today, Hiatus, um, which I'll do really quick. It's a pretty short one, so oh well. I guess it goes on for a little, well, it's, it's kind of short. Hiatus. Time is frozen, it seems. It feels as only yesterday we were speaking on the phone, making plans to meet. And now the whole world is floating in suspension, 
Each day feels heavy. The moments trudge along like tired soldiers heading home after a skirmish. Never before, never ever before, did that unfillable void within correspondence to the world outside like this. I have always felt like that yellowed, wrinkled leaf lying in the garden path while the rest of the world laughed and roamed around, stamping its careless feet all over me. Now, whenever I see, it is eerie, empty, empty streets, empty shops, empty everything, as though that void within has leaped out of me and expanded itself, become an apparition, and swooped across the streets, swallowing everything in its path. Perhaps now you will know how it feels to sit and watch while others go about their lives and their happy homes with their happy families. It's like browsing through somebody's Facebook vacation pictures and wishing it could be me, and then having to go about one's own insipid life, pretending as though you didn't wish for that exact same thing. Perhaps now you will know how it feels to live with that ghost within, to wake up every morning, drink your coffee, and carry on your life without losing it. And every activity, eating, sleeping, finishing work, is conducted like an inescapable routine. And then, at the end of, all, of it all, you return to yourself, to that ghost within that simply wouldn't leave. Perhaps now you will realize that what you celebrated as your 13th wedding anniversary were 13 frigging years of my life without you, of living with that unexercised demon within. That was Vidya Van Kat's poem. This week, um, more about the lockdown. Uh, thanks so much for sharing that video. And um, sorry we missed you for reading it yourself. Uh, the timing was just off, I guess, a little bit. But, um, but I'm glad, glad to be able to read it for you. Now, um, Greg Bell would like to join in. Oops, hang on. Greg Bell would like to join in. And um, let's give him a call. See if I can find Greg's poem. Hey, Greg, you're on. Uh, let me pull you in. Um, I uh, hear, I hear, you, and I see you. Okay, hang on. Hi, Tim. Hey, yeah, good to see you again. Um, you have a great internet yeah. connection, yeah. so it's very large. Let me shrink your head a little. Okay. <laughs> uh, a, you mean my head has gotten too big? For your me, head huh? got way too big, man. Oh, no. <laughs> so, how you doing uh, today? Just, I was just listening to you read a, a marvelous poem. Yeah, 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 I like Vidya a lot. Um, she called in a couple weeks ago, and um, good to hear from her again. Um, I'm, I'm trying to find, did you send your poem to me anywhere? I did. I sent it to Tim at Rattle. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I got to go. And I, I don't have a tangible copy, so I'll have to read it off the screen. Uh, okay. Do, do you have your own? Can you read it off your own screen? Because you're not be able to. You're not going to be able to see it. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'd better dig it out then. Yeah, you'd better dig it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're since you're. Um, you know, we uh, broadcast. There's a there's a minute long delay. So by the time it, um, although I could put it on screen and then, um, yeah. But you should just pull it up pretty you know, quick. <laughs> you, you know what? I, I've got another here that I just wrote. So I'll I'll read this. Okay. Can you, it's, can you send it to me? Uh, it's more timely. Can you send it to me really quick so I can... Uh... Oh, I, be, I beg your pardon, yeah. Okay. Of course, you want to put it on the screen. Yeah, it's just nice to be able to read along. Uh, let's see. Going into email. And... Uh, Um, let's see. Well, you do that. I'm gonna make sure I didn't miss anybody else who wanted to read. Okay, I'm moving in to find it. It's it should be right there. Well, do you want to just read Mothering Day? Because I have it. I have that right here, and it says Mother's Day. The um, I can I can read that. It's not on my screen. Um, I, uh, I'm not going to be able to read off your screen. Huh? No, no. Uh, 
You know what, Tim? I'm wasting your time. Then uh, that's. Well, why don't you? I, I don't why wanna... don't you? Uh, I'll hang up and call you back in a minute. Just pull up Mother's Day on your computer, and then um, I'll call you back. How about that? Okay. okay. okay All right. Bye. Sorry. No problem. About that. <laughs> okay. So let's see. Let me look at. Um, trying to see you through the call list. We'll, we'll try Pranab Gosh again. He wasn't answering. Um, it's probably, you know, if you have, um, you can turn the ringtone on or off. A lot of people have Skype on in the background, and um, like I do, so uh, you can't hear the ringtone when people call. Uh, my ringer is off, so if you have your ringer off, I could be calling you and you just don't know. So, um, so either keep an eye on Skype or um, figure out how to turn your ringer on. But I'll, I'll try um, Pranab Gosh again really quick while we wait for Greg Bell. We'll call him back in just a minute. Um, the show's pretty much over anyway. Uh, this is going to be the last, the last two callers. Because um, past, we want to go about an hour. We're a little bit past uh, the hour mark. So, let's see. Yeah, unfortunately, Pranab Gosh is not answering his uh, Skype. So let's try. Uh, we'll call Greg Bell back again. Hopefully, he pulled up his poem by now. Hello again. Hey, Greg, you got it now? Uh, I'm running down here and I'm trying to find... Uh, a... Do you want me to just read it? Sure. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll read it for you. And you... Uh, you know, uh, as a matter of fact, um, I, I, I was just there. No, you did a great job of reading that other poem, so uh, go ahead and feel okay, free. Okay, yeah, it's a sonnet. It's, I like sonnets. Do you want to introduce it, and then I'll read it? Yeah, say, say what you want to say about it. Well, uh, it's, a, it's a sonnet that, that was included in uh, my book, which is Looking for Will, My Bardic Quest with Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's uh, a attempt, an attempt to write in the voice of Shakespeare. Hmm. Um, and and there it is. So it's uh, it's evocative of. Uh, you mentioned deep time earlier. Mm -hmm. It's it's evocative of, of time that's more expansive than our own. I think. Yeah. Okay. Here. Well, I'll read it, and everybody will be able to see it here. This is Mother oh, okay. Day, by Greg Bell. Uh, Down through the many centuries, long past, we've sought to honor powerful cosmic forces, embodiments of qualities that last the ages, gods, but like who shape our courses. Now this day do we call Mothering Day. Then let John, Barleycorn, and Zeus abide, for we shall honor goddesses today, and let the fathers wait for time betide. So do we honor Gaia and Cybele? Oh yeah, but yet the goddess um, I ever see you should have read this. <laughs> the, a lot of things I can't pronounce. Twas a woman bred thee, bore thee, birthed thee, tendered thee, Oh, let us honor her. Answer me this, my sisters and my brothers. Where would we all be without our mothers? Excellent. Yeah, I love that last couplet. Um, yeah, and sorry for butchering those names. Is it Sybil? Is that how you say it? Guy and Sybil? Sibele. Sibele, see? <laughs> anyway, yeah, thanks so much uh, for sharing right. that, Greg. You're doing yeah. a great job. Yeah, oh, my, yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for, for calling in and sharing that. All right. Have yeah. a great one. Have a good one. Okay, so uh, we did get one last phone call, and, and we're only five minutes over time. Let, let me give whoever called in a call. We'll see who that was. There's a 773 number I'm calling right now. Hey. Hey, this is Tim with Rattle, and you are live on the air. Do you have a poem you wanted to share? <laughs> yeah, um, it's Jessica from Chicago. Hey, I didn't Jessica. think I would make it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. Um, yeah, we, you know, it's I, I, around um, you know one hour in. I start to kind of wind it down, but um, but we'll, we'll still go for. It. Did you send? Uh, did you eat, submit your poem this week or? Um... Um, it's not this week. I sent it last week, so I don't know how if that will still work for you. It will. Um, when you say sent it, do you mean um, submitted it or did you mean email it? I did submittable, and it's called Helmet. Okay, yep, I have it right here. Hey, this is the first okay. one that's sort of worked completely all the way through, <laughs> like it's supposed to. So it's already already <laughs> ready to go on screen. Do you want to introduce uh, what it's about? Um, yeah, this is um, this was my 
I guess, my poem about the virus without actually mentioning the virus, because la- two weeks ago, there was still nothing in the news except for stuff about the pandemic. And um, I, we bought bicycles, and shortly after that, um, cars were just <laughs> speeding down all the empty streets, and mm-hmm. I was like, damn it, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's still not safe. Um, so I just kind of wrote a, a poem about that, or like a silly little poem. Well, sounds good. Yeah, let's hear it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Helmets. I bought a bike because the city is safer and the people stay inside now, except for when they don't. And anyway, I bought this bike because the streets are supposed to be quiet, but now there are all these reports about speeders, and I realized my helmet was a decade old, useless against lawbreakers. So I dive right into option paralysis and sift through site after site, Helmet after helmet, burn after burn. Do I go with MIPS technology so that my head is 10% safer when the car flips me over its haunches and leaves me on the pavement? Or should I save the extra 20 bucks and take my chances? What the hell is wave cell and does it come in rainbow? I forgot to ask anything about the bike specs, except if they had it in purple, they didn't. And when could I expect the compliments to start rolling in about my new hot body? No comment. I bought a bike, and I know the city is not going to be safer, safe forever, and all the people are going to be outside, except for when they aren't. And the sound of the cars resuming to normal speed, getting stuck in traffic and honking, will be a sad reminder of the time I wasted clicking through pages of Helmet. <laughs> that was Helmet by Jessica Dawson. Thanks so much for sharing that, Jessica. Um, yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. That was a fun one, a good way to end the show. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> thanks and have a good awesome. one and everybody thanks, yeah so go go every go spend your sunday out bike riding it's a good good way to do it <laughs> yeah okay bye bye okay so that was the show for today um we already mentioned uh, next week's prompt is um the run and sentence poem for uh tuesday's rattlecast and tuesday's rattlecast is with um rosemary watola Trommer. And her uh, two new books, Naked for Tea, came out last year, I think. And then she has a hot-off-the-press book that's not quite even available yet called Hush, which we have the PDF for. And um, that is going to be Tuesday, May 12th at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Rosemary is a great poet. She's been in Poetry Spawn a bunch of times. She's been uh, won the Ekphrastic Challenge a few times. And um, this is her, her uh, 11th and 12th books. And she's a great performer, too. So it's going to be an excellent show. So tune in. Uh, Tuesday, May 12th at 9 p.m. Eastern for Rosemary Watola Tromer. And if you write your run-on sentence poem, you can uh, com- um, submit it to openmic at rattle.com and participate in the uh, prompt open mic there, too. So that's all for um, this morning. Happy Mother's Day once again to everybody who is watching at home uh, who might be a mother or has a mother, which is everybody. And um, hope you have a good rest of your day, and I will see you soon. Good night.